Our next guest debut novel is already being hailed by some as the book of the summer. Emma Rosenblum's Bad Summer People takes place in a fictional part of Fire Island, where everyone has secrets, backstabbing, cheating, and betrayal all lead to a possible murder, and everyone's a suspect. Rosenblum writes, everyone knew everyone, and everyone knew everyone's business. Emma Rosenblum is also the chief content officer of the Bustle Group, the global media and lifestyle company. Good morning. All right. Hey. Welcome to CBS Mornings. Um, Thank you. You base this off a place you know very well. So I got to ask you, are, are you bad summer people? <laughs> I think people are not good or bad. Okay. I think people are very complicated and people have good parts and bad parts. There are shades of gray in everyone. But I think I'm a good person. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> but some of these characters might have thought that they were bad or they were good people as well. So what what made you want to write about this place, about these people and make this kind of juicy summer dish that I was reading on the train and very much enjoying? Oh, good. I spent every summer growing up in Salt Air, which is a town in Fire Island. And this is a fictionalized version of Salt Air in the book Bad Summer People. And I just thought it was the perfect place for a murder mystery. Everyone's contained. You have to take a ferry to get there. No one locks their doors. And everyone's known everyone forever. So mm. who's going to get murdered and how that happens, you'll have to find out in the book. Fictionalized, you say? It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that caused a little bit of a problem for you, right? Well, last summer, a leaked manuscript of the book uh, went around town. And people did start to guess who was based on who. But they are all made up. They're very heightened versions of the real kinds of people that you would meet in a summer town outside of New York City. Oh, that must have been terrifying. <laughs> I mean, all press is good press. I understand. It okay. was terrifying for my parents, let's oh, say. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, Are they getting, like, Facebook messages from people? Like, am I this person? Right. Am I this person? <laughs> but... Uh, Ultimately, everybody kind of wanted to be in it also. Right. If you're left out, you feel a little bit left out. Why am I not in the book? <laughs> well, it's very sort of white lotus. Like, I found myself being, thinking, oh, my God, I can't stand these people, and then turning the page to find out what's going on in their <laughs> lives. You know, what is it about wealthy people? Like, the idea that wealthy people may be miserable underneath, even though their life is so glittery and perfect. But that's exactly it. It's so juicy to think, okay, you have so much money, you can buy as many homes as you want, you have everything you want, but underneath there might be a deep unhappiness. I think that that idea really draws people in and they want to be a fly on the wall and see what that's really like. Now, when I first heard the premise of this and the name of it, I immediately thought they're turning this into a TV show at some point which they now are, right? Well, I hope so, yeah. So it's been optioned by Amazon Prime, so we hope to bring it to the small screen as a limited series at some point soon. So fingers crossed that that happens. Who's in the dream cast? I, when I was writing, I was thinking um, that Lauren, one of the main characters, who's got a very chic blonde bob, was maybe a Blake Lively-esque person. Mm -hmm. And that maybe Jen, who is the picture-perfect woman who's very dark underneath, was a kind of Natalie Portman-type character. So, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> so, listen, you've got a demanding job. You've got a couple of sons. That's what I was going to say. What are you making us all look right. bad? Right. Like, where do you find time? How do you get this done? So, the first book I wrote, I really would carve out time in between Zoom calls of my day job. I would bring up the document and kind of type away when I had those little breaks in between. We're not at the office full time anymore. So, I found that I had time that before I used to go get a coffee with a colleague, and now I was just at my computer waiting for my next meeting to start. So I filled that time writing fiction. I thought that would be a fun, creative outlet for me, and it worked. And a bit of a successful one. Did you ever anticipate it would have this kind of response? I mean, this is your debut novel, right? No, yes, I wrote it. I didn't even think it was a book. I, I thought, oh, I have a lot of words here, and I sent it around, and people really responded to it, and I was so happily surprised that people actually liked it, and not only liked it, but would get through it in a day on the beach and say, to me, I didn't want to put it down. That yeah. was so gratifying. It is the perfectly sized book. Yeah. And it's got <laughs> such a pretty cover, too. It is. Oh, yes. it is. There you go. Right? And a beach, beach, beach. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, Emma Rosenblum, thank you so much for being with us. Bad Summer People is on sale now. We'll be right back.